and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and on today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at a, an old but very useful tool in Photoshop CS5. Now, the tool is called the Art History Brush, and it works with history states and snapshots, and it allows you to create painterly effects. But I will admit that the default settings aren't really as cool, and they don't kind of show off the brush and all that it can do if you just stick to those defaults. So we're going to venture from the defaults, and I just want to show you, here are some kind of before and afters that I did um, just yesterday while I was preparing for this. So as you can see, it's quite a fast process, but this is one before and this is one after. Now, this is kind of the most simplest thing. This is as close to the defaults as I was using, and you can see that it, it kind of just looks like almost like a filter was run on the original image. Um, you can also do a lot more complex things. So here, we've taken a photo like this, and I've made it look much more painterly. In fact, not even very filled in, just very abstract. Now, we can use techniques like this, again, on an image like this one, but we can also merge that image back with the original using layers in Photoshop. Or we can make things look very realistically painted. So in this case, we've turned this little rooster from this to this. And I want to make sure that you can see that, so let's just zoom in a bit more. Again, you can see here's the original photograph, and here is the painted image. And there's no way that I could do this um, by hand, <laughs> just because I don't really have the talent to. So I'm sure that many of you could take the new mixer brush and the natural media bristle tips in Photoshop CS5, and you could do this. In fact, you could probably do this from hand, but I can't. And so the advantage that the art history brush brings for me is that it always clones from the source, or well really from wherever you want it to clone from, in which case I always use it to clone from the source, so that even if I mess up the first time around, it resamples from that original data, making it able or making me able to create something like this. All right, let's go ahead and just zoom back a little bit. We'll move to the next image. So this is just to show you that, you know, I didn't really like this picture because I don't like, obviously, the little tags and the, the cow's ears, but if I'm going to turn this into a painting, it's very easy to get rid of those little tags plus all the flies. I mean, I can even get rid of the other cow in the background and really simplify it and turn it into a painting. Likewise, on this image of the flower, we can turn that into a painting. And this image of the artichoke, we can go ahead and make kind of a little bit more complex like this. So which one should we start with? Well, let me turn the lights back on here. And we will go to the sunflower, and I will open it first, and then we'll work on the artichoke image. So let's go ahead and select the Art History Brush, and it is right over here in the Tool panel. You can see here's the Art History Brush tool underneath just the regular History Brush tool. Now, both of these brushes work with history and snapshots. So you can see I've got my History panel open, and the source is set to the initial snapshot that's created when you open a document. And that's just the way that Photoshop set up. That just happens by default. Now, a word of warning. When you're using the Art History Brush or the History Brush, either one of these, there's a few things that if you do them to your document, you'll need to take another snapshot before you can paint with it. And those things are, you can't really change from like 16-bit to 8-bit. If you change the bit depth, you'll need to take another snapshot or these brushes won't work. If you change color modes, for example, if I go from RGB to CMYK, again, I need to take another snapshot in order for the brushes to work. And if I change the size, so if I open a file and it's too big and then I resize it down, I'm going to have to create another snapshot, which is not a big deal, right? I can just use the little menu right here and choose New Snapshot to create that snapshot. Seems like I just accidentally undock that, so let's put that back. Okay, so I guess what's really important is that you need to pay attention to the state from which you are cloning when you use the Art History Brush. And it will tell you, trust me, if you change the size or something and you try to paint, you get that international symbol, you know, the circle with the line through it telling you that you can't, and usually it gives you a reason, but the reason will be that there's no corresponding state, so you just need to take a new snapshot. Okay, so let's go ahead and paint on this flower, and let me make sure that my tool is set to the default. So I just did a little right mouse click, and I will reset this tool. And you can see that there are a variety of different styles that we can paint with. There's tight styles and loose styles. So the, the tightness or the looseness really means how 
close, the art history brush will follow the original lines. And then you can have short kind of painterly effects, medium or long ones. You can also have these curly effects, but um, I find that I use the top set a lot more often. And then there's also the dab, which is basically um, what you saw in the first image of the pair. So let's start with maybe the tight medium. And I'm just going to paint right on top of my image. And you can see that it is turning it into a painting. And let's zoom in to make sure that we can see this. So the only thing is, typically I think that the default settings, I just, you know, and obviously it depends on how large your image is, but I think that the default settings for your brush size are just usually a little bit too big. Because I actually think it destroys a little bit too much of the detail. So I'm going to go ahead and change the brush size, and we can do that a variety of ways. I can even just, you know, use the left bracket key to decrease the brush size. And then I can repaint over areas where I actually want more detail to show through, like the center of the flower here. So don't be afraid to use a much smaller brush size than you think you're going to need, because I think you're going you're gonna to find that you get more detail with those smaller brush sizes. And like many of the painting tools, you can paint in different blend modes if you want to, or you can paint on different layers and set the layers to different blend modes, which we'll do in just a minute. You can change the opacity here. You can change the area, which means how far or how much um, area is covered with each paint stroke, which is really easy to, to see with something like the dab style, because you're either going to be setting down paint in a small area or in a big area. And there's also the tolerance setting, which basically the art history brush looks at areas that are changing when it's painting, and it will only paint in big areas of change if you set the tolerance up. Okay, so that's kind of a nice first kind of overall look at it. But I wanted some more variables, so I thought, well, what if I changed my brushes, right? Because not only can I use just these round computational brushes, right, the circles, but you'll notice that if I scroll down, I can use any of these natural media bristle tips. I could use custom shapes that I've defined as bristle tips. Um, we can change the spacing for any of these. We can change the angle and the roundness. I mean, the number of brushes that you can kind of load into the art history brush is just crazy. In fact, if we go to our tool presets, so let's just close this down for a second. If you look at the tool presets, it doesn't look like we ship any tool presets for the art history brush by default, but in fact we do. If you use the flyout menu, you'll notice right down here it says art history. Well, I want to append the tool presets that I already have, because I have some custom tool presets, and I just want to add these to it. So I'll click Append. Now look at I get all these different options. So let's go back in history. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that initial snapshot. So this is like our original file. I just went back in time and reverted it. And we can pick something like an Impressionist look. And now you can see that this is a very different look based on the brush that I have selected. So I'll just paint a small area here with the Impressionist brush. Or we can go over here to an oil sketch, and I can paint over here. And again, you can see that I'm getting a different look. Now, it might be a little subtle when the video is compressed, but it does have a very different texture that I'm applying to it. Or one that will be really easy to see, maybe, is this pointillism. Right? So now look at all those little dots that I'm creating. And those are just because it's, I've changed by selecting these tool presets. Photoshop has automatically changed the brush tip that I'm painting with. So you can imagine with all the different brush tips here, I mean, you have all of these, you can make your own. The possibilities are absolutely just endless. But I typically find that um, that painting directly on the image, if you cover the whole image, it does sort of look like a filter was applied. And that might just be me, because maybe I'm not that talented. So what I do instead is instead of painting directly on the background, I will typically create a new layer and paint on that layer. So let's give that a try. Again, I'm going to go to my history for a minute and revert this image back. And then on my layers panel, I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to fill this layer with white. So I can hold down the Shift key and hit Delete. And that brings up the Fill dialog box. And I'll go ahead and use white. 
And then I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit of this layer so that I can see through to the underline layer. Now, because my history brush, in this case the art history brush, is set to sample from the original flower image, I can go ahead and paint on this layer, right? And it's painting on the white layer so that I could go in and actually hide that background. But I don't actually want to paint with this brush, so I'm going to do Command Z to undo that paint stroke. And let's go in and let's find a different tool preset here. And we can go ahead and close our brushes panel now. I'm just double clicking or just, you know, double tapping on the actual title of the panel to collapse that. And I mean, we could even go with something as crazy as like flower power, which I don't know if you're able to tell or not, but each one of these little strokes is actually a little teeny flower. We can do that, or again, if we don't like that, we can just go back in time and choose something else, maybe the palette knife instead. And you can see how it's filling in. And see, the last one was just set to dab, I believe. This one actually has this tight, long style associated with it, which is why I'm getting these longer paint strokes, right? And I can manually override this, right? If I want a tight but shorter stroke, we can do that. You can see now that the stroke isn't quite as long. Or we could go in here and we could make it a little bit looser, so that it's kind of a little bit wilder as I paint. You know, it, it doesn't hold those edges quite as tightly as, say, the other styles do. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot you can do here. And then when you're finished, we could, like I mentioned before, we could bring up this um, opacity to 100%. We could also try changing some of the blend modes, so maybe multiply or we could screen or something. There's, anyway, there's all sorts of things that you can try. All right, so let's just close this for a minute. I'm going to not save it, and I'm going to go back to Lightroom, and we're going to open up the artichoke file. So Command or Control E, I want to edit the original. The reason that I want to edit the original is twofold. One, you can see that this is a layered file, even though there's only a single layer. But the other reason is because I needed it to bring over a path, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So <clears throat> with this artichoke right here, we can do the same thing. And what I would recommend you, you do, if you're going to do this often, is just create an action which makes a new layer, and then fills the layer with white, and then sets the opacity for that layer to 80%, so that you don't have to continuously do it over and over again. It's just add a new layer, fill the layer with white, and then change the opacity to maybe 80% so that you can still see it. It's kind of like being tracing paper I can see underneath. And then just tap the Y key to bring you back to your art history brush. OK, so in this case, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start painting. Now, I think that this is a little bit too sloppy for me. So let's undo that. And instead of choosing loose medium, we'll go ahead and do a little maybe tight medium. And nope, still too sloppy. So I'm going to change the brush size down a little bit and see if that way I can get a little bit more precise. And I like something like this. So once I have the brush stroke down that I like, then I'm going to start thinking about where exactly I want to paint. So I could definitely go in and just paint around the edges if I wanted to. And actually, that is what I want to do because I mean, I, I think this is nice. This is It's kind of graphical. I mean, it doesn't look like the original photograph, but I like the effect. And I could use that in some other artwork. So what I'm just trying to say is that this, you know, you don't have to paint the whole thing. This can be a transformation of a photograph into a painting or into a graphic. And we can increase the opacity there to 100% if we wanted to. This might be a good one. We could try this one set to multiply. That might be an interesting effect where you're getting some painterly effects there. All right, and let's try it again. Only this time, I'm going to add a new layer. And let's not fill it with anything. That way, we can keep it transparent, and I can put it on top of anything. But what I am going to do is I'm going to use a path that I already created. You can see I actually created one path that kind of goes around the artichoke. That's not the one we're going to use. We're actually going to use this path here, which if I turn off the artichoke, you'll be able to see it's just a bunch of square rectangles, right, that I created one path and then made another and another and another. Well, in this case, I want to come in here and let's keep this as, let's try it as tight, short, 
but let's go over to my brush here and let's just change this back. Instead of using kind of this custom tip shape, we'll just use a regular tip shape and see what that looks like here. And what I'm going to do, because remember, when we look at my history, we can see that I'm sampling from the original artichoke. I can use the flyout menu here and I can actually tell Photoshop to stroke the path with whatever tool I want. And that's, in this case, obviously I'm going to use the art history brush and that's why I set up the art history brush before I came in here to stroke path. We'll go ahead and click OK and you can see, all right, so it came in way too gloppy and way too big. Let's undo that. What size brush do I have? Well, right there, that tells me a lot. I've got way too big of a brush. Let's bring it down to like maybe four or five and then let's try that again. Let's stroke that path with the art history brush. And this time I'm going to get much, much more delicate little strokes. Of course, it's going to take longer, but it's doing a ton of computation, so that's okay. But the great thing is, like, I could never get this effect. Like, like I could never do this. I could never actually paint this and make it, well, one, I don't have the talent to do it, and two, I don't have the patience to do it. Now, this is, I think it's still a little bit too big. Like, I would want this to not cover so much area. So I'm going to actually hit cancel and cancel out of there. And let's decrease that area to maybe like, let's try 10. That might be too much, but it might not be. I'm not sure. And then I'll click stroke path one more time. Oh, see, this is a little bit too little. So, I mean, you can see here that you have to play with all the options because each one's going to give you a different result. But this one, I, it doesn't quite fill in the center of that rectangle, but you know what? That might be a cool effect. I'm not really sure. It all depends on what you're after. I guess my point here is that, you know, the art history brush, I, I think it kind of got a bad rap because maybe the default settings aren't going to give you exactly what you want and it just kind of looks like it smudges the image. But when you really start digging into the art history brush and you start playing with all the settings and you start thinking, well, hey, maybe I could paint on a blank layer or, you know, hey, maybe I could be more accurate and have it actually stroke a path, then I think you can come up with some really, really great um, artwork. So there's just a little kind of before and after. Um, you know, here was the actual artichoke and here is the painting afterwards, which I think is really quite cool. Well, I hope that will kind of inspire you to explore the art history brush and have a lot of fun with it. My name's Julianne Cost. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again on another episode of The Complete Picture. <laughs>